The Orlando Magic are on a three-game win streak, and we're very, very excited. Looking forward to win number four on Wednesday. We can only dream. But Jamal Mosley's focus is still on the big picture, still on the great beyond. We're going to chat a little bit about that on today's Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is December 13th, 2022. My name is Philip Rossman-Reich. I'm the expert and site editor over at orlandomagicdaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, Jamal Mosley keeps the big picture in focus. So we're going to keep the big picture in focus too. The things that he is doing that have both led to short-term success and some short-term struggles, but are looking at what this team will eventually be. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. First, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for. The Locked On Podcast Network, it's your team every day. Today's episode is also brought to you by Prize Picks. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. I think most, most Magic fans understand what this season is um, and, 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 why, and, and, what, and how the Magic are, were going to struggle this season. Um, everyone understood this was a young team, that this was a team that was trying to learn how to win. And so. Some uh, some of the things that this team is struggling with are really, really predictable. Um, some of the things that this team is struggling with were not, obviously. And, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, because we wanted to see this team take some more tangible steps and take some, some bigger steps forward, are rightfully asking questions about their coach. Jamal Mosley has been a bit of a lightning rod among Magic fans because... The players are the players. The players are going through their growth, going through their development, and it's Jamal Mosley's job to usher them through that. It's Jamal Mosley's job to help them be better individually and eventually to fit into a wider team scheme. And being a second-year head coach... Uh, you know, first first time in the lead chair, second year of doing that. There's, I will say this: he is going through as much growth as this young team is going through, and a lot of people have focused in on individual game decisions, have focused in on rotation patterns, on some playing decisions. You know, playing Kevon Harris over R.J. Hampton is certainly a big lightning rod. Playing Admiral Schofield as much as he has is a bit of a lightning rod too. These are all decisions that I'm not saying we shouldn't question, but I, I think sometimes these decisions miss the point and are not considering what Jamal Mosley's actual purpose and what he's actually trying to accomplish um, in his coaching style and in his coaching patterns. I think we the best place to start is with an example. Um, Wednesday night against the LA Clippers, the Orlando Magic... We're struggling. The starting group especially was struggling. And, you know, I, I think I looked it up. I think, the, I think the Magic starting group in that game had a net rating of like minus 33 um, for the game. But, and, and more specifically, Markel Fultz was really struggling. Um, Cole Anthony was having a really nice game. Markel Fultz was really, really struggling. But, the end of the game and in overtime, that starting group was in. Jamal Mosley kept his faith in that group, and he kept his faith in Fultz specifically. And it was with Fultz that we kind of get a glimpse into what Mosley's coaching philosophy is and what his coaching philosophy is for this season. The Magic were, were, were struggling. Fultz made a, a bad shot decision at the end of regulation, you know, kind of went for the glory himself. Did the same thing Sunday against Toronto, by the way. 
uh, or Friday against Toronto, by the way. Um, a shot that the Magic trust him to take, trust him to make, and a good shot for Markel Fultz, but he missed it. And in overtime again, Fultz, uh, the Magic were down by one. Fultz was driving, and he turns the ball over at a critical point. Now, a lot of us definitely feel like Markel Fultz is the veteran of the group, but it's hard to forget, it's hard to remember that he's only 25 years old himself, and has really only played one full season in the NBA. You know, we could give him two seasons. He, he is, he is an, as poised and composed as he is, he is incredibly inexperienced. But the Magic stuck with him. And in overtime, on several plays, uh, on several occasions, and, and when, when the Magic got the ball back down by one on the next possession after that turnover, the Magic ran that same play that they ran at the end of regulation, the one that got Marco Foltz a jumper uh, from, from the wing, from one of his good kill spots around the elbow area. But instead of taking the shot this time, Foltz ran the pick and roll, absorbed the double team, and got the ball back to Paolo Bancaro, who was able to get the foul, get to the line, and give the Magic the lead for good to start his string of six straight free throws to win that game in overtime. Jamal Mosley, I think, really crystallized his coaching philosophy at the, after the game. He said, quote, We believe in every one of these guys. There are going to be mistakes made in the basketball game. For these guys to grow and develop chemistry for one another, they can't get yanked every time they're trying to make the right play and just happen to turn the ball over. Do we want those to happen? No. He has been out for a long time, so his ability to get back on the floor, we believe, and what he has done to get back on the floor. Those are moments we have to continue to show each one of these guys. This, to me, is the core of what Jamal Mosley is trying to do. He is thinking about the big picture. He is thinking about the guys that they have faith in, the guys that they believe in, the guys that they trust, and not and 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 giving them the space to fail, but not necessarily the space to fail, the space to fail and to learn from what they've done. To learn in real time. Yes, there is a call for accountability. And, and I think that is a real thing. And I think that is a real deal. But that accountability starts with saying, recognize your own mistakes and do better the next time you see that situation. And that was in play during Wednesday's game against the Clippers. That's been in play the, these last two games where Orlando players have made mistakes. They turned the ball over 20, t- 20 times on Friday against the Raptors. I think they turned it over 18 times on Sunday. They're making mistakes. But the point of the season is not to punish players for making mistakes. It's to teach them and to empower them to learn from them. It's giving them the space and the guidance to enter that same situation a second time and do better with it. This is what Jamal Mosley is trying to get across this season. This is the leveling up that he talked about all offseason. It's this empowerment that he has given to his players, to the guy, to the players that he trusts, to, to everyone on the team to say, okay, you're going to make a mistake in the game. How are you going to respond to it? I, I, I will give you the tools. I will give you the space, the leash, so to speak, to, to make these mistakes but the expectation then is you will learn from them. And so we've only seen players really yanked when they make repeated mistakes. You know, when, you know there's there's a few possess, few times where Bull Bull was, was laid on a few defensive rotations. Um, you know, Mo Bamba's had that issue too. Those are the only times we've really seen guys pulled when we see repeated mistakes. Now, obviously, injuries have thrown a wrench in all that because the Magic just need a lineup out there that can function. And that's been trouble. But now that this team's a little bit healthier, we're starting to see this philosophy crystallized on the floor. Now, this can be frustrating because it can cost the team wins. It can cost the team moments in the game. And we're going to get into the ways that it does coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our pals at Price Picks. I play daily fantasy games. I played them for a while, and I've always found some of those other daily fantasy per, uh, fantasy outlets to be, uh, let's just say, a bit frustrating. You're entering these gigantic pools with thousands of people, only a couple hundred, if that, win the money. I was playing just to make my money back. I'd be happy 
if I put down, if I went into a, a one dollar or two dollar entry pool and won three dollars and got a little bit, got a little bit of my money back. I was just watching my bank account on those sites dwindle further and further. And it was just, you know, those salary cap games, especially it's just, it's really hard to, to kind of figure out, okay, what are the value plays here? I, I can't miss out on this gigantic Nikola Jokic game. Well, prize picks is completely different. You're not playing up against every, uh, against a whole bunch of other people. You're playing up against the numbers. And what does that mean? Well, that means you have a better chance to win. And that's why prize picks is the daily fantasy that I play. Here's how the game works. You pick two to six players and if they will go, if they will score more or less than their prize picks projections, you want to you want to believe that Paolo Bancaro is going to score twenty points tomorrow night against the Atlanta Hawks. You take that more. You want to believe that Mo Bamba is going to grab more than seven rebounds. You hit the more. You could you can do a bunch of those bunch of those 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 player player projections. Plus, even mixed sports if you want to work Thursday night football in or the NFL games this weekend. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus projections available. And you can win up to 25 times your money, with chances to win a little bit more if you, even if you don't get all of your picks correct. Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch, including NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, bo- soccer, WNBA, a whole bunch. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's really that easy. They have safe and fast withdrawals, and they're currently operational in more than 30 states, including here in Florida and Canada. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with promo code Locked On. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code Locked On at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. We want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic your first listen today. For your second listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So I want to jump back into, I think, some of the frustration that, that people have with Jamal Mosley. And a lot of that has to do with rotations. A lot of that has to do with kind of game management stuff. But I, I would argue that a lot of these frustrations are thinking too narrow, are, are too short-term thinking. The, the reality is that Jamal Mosley understands this is a big, long-term project. And I think when you watch this team, you definitely feel like they are playing. They are sometimes playing as the team they want to be, rather than the team they are. And, and what I mean by that is, they often play an offensive style that that maybe this team isn't quite suited for. They're trying a bunch of things defensively. They're switching a lot defensively, even if they don't have the personnel, because what they ultimately want is they want to teach their players the reads and thoughts to make this project work. As they add new player, as they add new players that maybe fit it a little bit better, that maybe fit what they're trying to do. The thing is, this season is not about. I say this all the time. This season is not about this season. It's about setting up next season. It's about figuring out what's going to work and how to use these players correctly. So, I know a big complaint that I have, and I've seen plenty of, is the Magic don't stagger Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner enough. Well. Certainly they could do that, and that might result in a few more wins here or there for this team, but that doesn't give them the look at Franz Wagner and Paolo Bancaro that they want. They want to see them playing together. They want they want to make sure they get a healthy dose of minutes together. And so there is a little bit of that experimenting and that looking at things uh, uh, for beyond for something beyond this season. Again, it's it's not necessarily about this season all the time. And so you look at the, the things and the thoughts that the Magic are trying to get, get at, it's always looking to something bigger. It's not about winning, you know, they want to win individual games. I'm not saying that. But that's not always the primary goal with how they construct a rotation or how or, or the lineups they use or the combinations they want to use or maybe even more importantly, how long they stick with some lineups. You know, I suggested last week during the losing streak that the Magic should move Bull Bull out of the starting lineup. That was that was kind of my big suggestion. Uh, one, you know, Chris is my half for Jamal Mosley is that yes, when the team is struggling on the court, when you are getting when you're not getting the short term results, 
find ways to simplify things. Find ways to make things easier. You can't just kind of roll things out to this plan when the plan isn't helping anybody in the short term. I, I think you do have to have a better balance of short and long-term gains, but then again, it's working now, so obviously something is is going well. But I, I, I tend to agree, though, with this philosophy of sticking with lineups maybe a, a tick longer than normal because this season isn't about winning or, or the ultimate goal of the season isn't to make the play in tournament. It'd be nice to, that's, no, one's, no one's debating that, but that's not what this season is for. And so if the Magic want to see that bowl bowl at the three lineup a little bit more or to check out Paolo Bencaro at the five, even though it isn't working, it's to get a good look at it. It's to give it its fair due, to give it its fair shot. So, again, to succeed or fail. It goes back to this idea that the Magic want to give everything its chance to chance to succeed or fail. They want to give these players the chance to figure it out. I love when Jamal Mosley doesn't call timeout before final possessions. It's empowering to the players to say, okay, I trust you to get a shot. Go, go see what you see and move on. It's this chance to learn that really matters. And you saw it again in Sunday's game against the Raptors. Pa- Paolo Bancaro was facing crazy double teams. Franz Wagner was cra- facing crazy double teams uh, in that game. And, you know, they were having varying degrees of success, breaking it down. Franz was certainly much more effective. Paolo was struggling facing some of the double teams he was facing in the post. And, I could guarantee that the Magic went back in the locker room, showed him some tape, said, okay, this is what we're going to do to to, to to get you around this, to, to fix this, but you got to go out there and execute it. And then Paolo went out there and executed. He started going on the perimeter a little bit more, was a lot more quicker with his decision-making, didn't allow those traps to get to him uh, as quickly, uh, You know, got the ball to the weak side much faster while the Raptors were loading up against him. These are things that you learn that, that you can see on tape, but learning how to do them on the court takes some trial and error. And Orlando is willing to let this team go through some trial and error. They're willing to let this team make some mistakes, to make these errors, to, 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 to learn from experience. That's what this season was supposed to be about. That's what this season uh, is, is trying to get at. And we're seeing that play out time and time again. We're seeing that become more of the story. And the hope is, again, the hope is that players are empowered enough to learn from their mistakes, are given the guidance to learn from their mistakes, that those mistakes become minimal. That we do get these little pockets where the Magic are winning games, where every piece of the puzzle comes together. And I think that's, that's what we're seeing in Mosley's coaching right now. Is all that faith, all the all, all those struggles that this team went through early in the season, they're paying off in this moment. Now, should it have taken this long? It's it's unfortunate that it did. I'm not gonna sit here and say that Mosley's been a perfect coach, and I have my criticisms for him too. But overall, the big picture looks pretty good. We could see what this team wants to be. We could see what this team is trying to get out. We know, you know, we could begin to see what this team needs to add to get there. And yeah, this team is getting healthier and we're starting to see the talent come to the forefront again. You know, guys aren't having to do all the heavy lifting that they were doing beforehand. And so we are starting to see this team learn from its mistakes to get better. And that's really what we want to see. I've said this, I know I've said this on the podcast before, but the goal this season it's not necessarily to win games in November and December. This is the time to learn and grow. But by March, February, March, April, perhaps, we could start focusing on individual games. We could start saying, the Magic need to win this game. I mean, to see the consistency that we're seeing over this last three-game stretch last for 10 games, 12 games, 15 games. We need to see it become a much more long-term thing. And that's where we're trying to get to. And that's where Mosley's trying to get his team to. Obviously, there's still a lot that goes into that. There are There's a lot of work, a lot of individual work that has to go into that. But the team is, t- is clearly this year, and especially this last week, 
taken some big steps. Now it's about spinning that forward toward the future. We'll talk about how the Magic spin that forward to the future coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our pals at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis this season. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and the World Cup. They've got it all at BetOnline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those on BetOnline as well. They're the fastest and easiest way to get all your betting info. Head to the website today to use or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game is starts. So what does this mean now for the future? You know, how, how do the Magic build? What is their next step? And, you know, I think the best way to get to that, the best way to talk about that is to reset uh, our, our expectations to what the team expected of themselves this year. You hear me I like to use the coachisms. I like to try and figure out what the coaches mean when they come up with their little buzzwords, when they come up with their little things that get them through their season, that kind of crystallize their, their coaching philosophy. And, you know, you've probably heard heard me say or, or make reference to leveling up. That was the Magic's call throughout the entire offseason. Jamal Mosley said it after the end of last season, said it throughout the summer, said it in training camp. How do you level up? And for him, that was... Learning, learning the details, learning to be attentive to detail, learning to, to, to do more of the things that will lead to winning. Um, to, for him, it was, you know, everyone getting better individually, getting better as a team. Um, you know, again, it's, it's, it's a fudgy thing. And there have been a lot of times this year when we've asked, this team needs to level up. After the loss to Oklahoma City Thunder, when they gave up a big lead on the road and just kind of shriveled in that fourth quarter, we said, these are the, these are the moments that cannot happen. The loss of the Toronto Raptors uh, specific was a specific one that I rem- that I'll, I'll recall pretty recently, where I said, "Like, look, you can lose games this year. It's okay to lose games as long as you're learning. Being non-competitive is not an option. You've got this team's got to be competitive. This team's got to be in these games. And look, that was a really down time. The injuries finally kind of broke them. Uh, they were they were struggling to find themselves and find themselves, and and they got they got hit pretty hard by a team that." kills you when you make mistakes the way the Magic were making mistakes. This last week has seen the team level up. And it's not just a winning streak. It's not just that they've won three games. It's it's that they've given up fewer than 110 points per, per 100 possessions in three of the last four games. The LA Clippers game, the only one where they gave up more. It's the defense being much more locked in, much more tied together. With, with a, a supreme effort that we haven't seen from this team on the defensive end. They made up for bad offensive nights against both the Clippers and the second game against the Raptors because their defense was really good. And, and the Magic's defense outside of that first quarter, first and third quarter against the, the Clippers was as good as it's been all year. Having that commitment to the defensive end, that is a sure sign that this team is leveling up, that it understands that it takes some dirty work to win, that it takes, that it takes a little bit more than scoring to win basketball games. And that's a tough thing for young players to understand. That, you know, you will get your opportunities to score if, if everything's running right, but if you get stops, that makes everyone's life easier. That makes everything easier. And that's a tough thing for, for any young team to understand. And, and, and I think that's been the thing that Mosley's had the toughest time getting this team to wrap its head around. But now that it finally is, they're seeing the results. As Franz Wagner said after, I think, Friday's game, if we do what the coaches are telling us, we could clearly see that it works. Um, and so again, that's, it's on them to make that consistent. Consistency is the thing. Consistency is always the thing that you're searching for uh, in the NBA. So what we need to see is what we always needed to see. We needed to see this team level up. We needed to see this team get better, become more consistent, learn these details. Play in these close games. Go through some of these mistakes. Learn from mistakes. Learn from mistakes in real time. Not let mistakes roll over. That was what was so promising about this team early in the season. It was, yeah, they made a lot of mistakes, but they rarely cascaded. They rarely built on each other to bury the team in a deficit they couldn't get out of. They rarely spread beyond one or two plays. That's why the Magic went on a nine-game losing streak, was mistakes just kind of built up to where built up to where they were down by 20, 20, you know, they were down too big to come back. What's happened in these last 
four games, because I would include the Milwaukee game in there, what's happened in these last four games is the Magic, Magic have been real attentive to the game plan. They haven't made these repeated mistakes. They haven't let mistakes fester and grow and, 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 and become more than one thing. They've grown and they've learned from everything. And that's ultimately what Jamal Mosley wants. Criticize his rotation decisions. There's plenty to criticize there. Criticize his game management. There's plenty to criticize there if winning a single game is all that really matters. But he has done a very good job keeping the big picture in mind. Keeping this team's overall message in mind. Keeping these players motivated to fit that message. To to find to find that that groove that they're they're in right now and to continue it. And obviously his job now is to keep this team playing at this level. It, right now it's it's not about Xs and Os, it's not about strategy. It's about pushing this team to understand this is the effort they'll need. Now as the Magic continue to build wins, as the Magic continue to play well, some of those things will shift. We will Re, you know, every coach is constantly re-examined, especially as expectations shift. And right now, this is a no-pressure season. The pressure is to improve, not to win. We're not judging Jamal Mosley based on his wins. We're judging him based on how well the team improves. And obviously, there's still a long way to go this season, but this is a win streak that shows that he has the team on the right path, thinking the right things, and doing a lot of the right things. And that's where this team goes next. Right now, it's keep doing this. Whatever's working, whatever this team is doing well, keep doing it. Keep building on it. Keep finding ways to reduce mistakes. Learn how to live with success. That's a really difficult thing, actually, because you know we saw the Magic win those two games against Dallas and Phoenix. Then they drop games to Houston and Charlotte. That can't happen. You got to learn how to live with success. You got to learn how to play with the lead, which is what was most encouraging about Sunday's game. Because there's been so many times this year where Orlando had a lead and they gave it up and would would sometimes even lose those games. Having a lead, having a sizable lead and maintaining it, that's that's a credit to coaching, to keeping the team focused and, and the team for keeping that focus and, and, and maintaining that level of play and not easing off the throttle. Orlando was playing as hard in that fourth quarter as they were in the second quarter when they built that lead. These are all the things that Bosley is trying to foster and grow. And frankly, he's had his eye on this big big picture for a long time. He's probably known that something like this was coming. It was just a matter of keeping the team focused on that and on that growth in the process. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Stitcher, tune in Himaly, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all of the places on all the podcasts to your podcast-enabled listening device for the latest on the Orlando Magic. Be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. Now that you're done listening to us, go make your next listen. The Locked On Sports Day podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. That's going to do it for me, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic, it's been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked on Magic.